contrary, doing it different, different, different. So this is from the Book of Enoch, and it's a bit long. I recorded the video with intentions of reading the whole thing, but I'm not going to do that. I'm just going to go ahead and go straight to the part that I feel is relevant. So this is around about the fourth verse. Um, and first there goes a great luminary named the sun and his circumference is like the circumference of the heaven and he is quite filled with illuminating and heating fire the chariot on which he ascends the wind drives and the suns go down from the heaven returns through the north in order to reach the east and it's so guided that he comes to the appropriate portal and shines in the face of the heaven and this way he rises in this way he rises in the first month in the great portal which is fourth those six portals in the cast and this was important because um the eclipse is coming up and just showing you how the sun is ruled now to most people that read maps that don't make sense but when you understand how earth is really constructed it makes a lot of sense so i'm going to get into a video that i did where I talked about the sun, the changing of the sun. Um, I talked about the six fallen stars. And so this stood out to me as well because it spoke of the luminaries, which are stars. Uh, in this chapter in Enoch, it speaks of the leaders of the stars. And it also speaks of the way it is led by the sun. So I find this um, just to be really interesting that I prophesied this so long ago from a dream. So we're going to get into that and I'll be back. by what's been happening in the heavens she said so that's why we're all outside watching the sky and I was like oh okay you know so I'm watching the sky with her I'm like okay let me pay attention because I know the Bible talks about things in the sky and how he would give signs so um for the season we're in so I'm you know watching and I noticed six fallen stars but they were blue not white that kind of look blue these were six blue falling stars i counted them one two three four five six six falling stars and they were falling to the ground um after i saw the six falling stars i it's, at that moment i'm realizing that something is about to happen okay if, if what happens in the heavens has been giving us direction to what's going to happen next that means the next thing that's about to happen is crucial and i need to prepare myself to do whatever i can to help so i see the star um okay i see the six star and they were all blue fell and i remember something talking about fallen stars in the bible i just couldn't remember exactly what it was after that happens I see a red, a really big red thing in the sky. I don't know if it was a star or a spaceship, but it was just a really, I mean, bright red, like a torch. How red a torch is, that's how red it was. When I figured out that I had powers, I was like, well, let me help y'all. So I was kind of able to direct the water in a different direction, like, telepathically I guess you could say but I'll say a gift from the Lord okay um and I was able Moses was able to hold water up so thank you Holy Spirit so it it does make sense that I was directing the water with my hands um but of course it was through the power of the Lord and not me so okay so revelation 9 says and a fifth angel blew his trumpet and i saw a star falling from heaven to earth and he was given the key to the shaft of the bottomless pit he opened the shaft of the bottomless pit and from the shaft rose smoke like the smoke of a great furnace and the sun and the air were darkened with the smoke from the shaft then from the smoke came locusts on the earth i had a dream about locusts for those of you who follow me look through my videos and they were giving power like the power of scorpions of the earth remember i had a dream about a scorpion type creature that i actually end up finding in the house i showed you all that for those who follow 
Um, and so he also told them not to harm the grass or any green thing or plant. He says, but only those people who do not have the seal of God on their foreheads. They were allowed to torment them for five months, but not to kill them. And their torment was like the torment of a scorpion when it stings someone. Um, they will, you know, seek death, but would not find it. And so I'm going to show you the locust. I'm going to show you the scorpion type centipede I found in the house from the dream. And I'm going to show you a man who was bitten by one of these unexplained creatures. And I do know this scripture manifests more than one way. So it just won't be um, manifesting as an actual locust or an actual scorpion like creature. But speaking of spiritual things as well. So I am aware of that. But I want to point out the stuff that has been coming to me in dreams first. Okay, so many have pointed out that the solar eclipse in 2017 will be followed by another in 2024. That's seven years. And in 2045, we're going to have another eclipse. And as you can see on this magazine, this is when man is going to become immortal. And that relates back to the scripture that talks about death, that they're seeking death but cannot find it. You see how that's all tied in there? Um, the, from the book of Enoch, in this chapter, parable of Enoch on the future lot of the wicked and the righteous. And I'm just going to get to what stood out. It says the words, the blessings of Enoch were with, he blessed the elect and the righteous who will be living in the day of tribulation when all the wicked and godless are to be removed. And you can't say that it doesn't stand out for today. Verse 2 says, and he took up his parable and said, Enoch, a righteous man whose eyes were opened by God, saw the visions of the Holy One in the heavens. And so my eyes, he has blessed me for my eyes to be opened by God, as well as many other of the elect and righteous people. Um, and so angels come to show us things in our dreams and visions. But this is what really stood out to me the most. He says... From them I heard everything, and from them I understood as I saw, but not for this generation, but for a remote one, which is for to come. Now, some people say this remote generation he was speaking of isn't us. Some people say that this is during the um, time of Noah. Um, so, but the important part is there's nothing new under the sun. We know that as in the days of Lot and Noah, so shall it be, and history repeats itself. So it does apply to us, and it's so beautiful we were not forgotten that we are spoken so highly of by the Most High. Another thing that stood out is verse 7, and it says, And the earth shall rent asunder. Actually, no, let's start with verse 5. Because in verse 5 it says, And all shall be smitten with fear, and the watchers shall quake. Now, when I hear watchers quaking, I think of earthquakes. I think of changes happening in Antarctica based on the book of Enoch, which is where the fallen angels have been imprisoned. I have more proof of that. Um, I'll get to that later, but I think I have found proof that Antarctica is where some of these angels are imprisoned. But it is very important because with this eclipse, many people are predicting earthquakes as well. Could this earthquakes be the watchers? I think so. What do you think? More from the book of Enoch, chapter 60. I just have to. In the year 500, in the seventh month, on the 14th day of the month in the life of Enoch, in that parable, I saw how a mighty quaking made the heaven of heavens to quake. Now, how does the heaven of heavens quake? To me, that means you're going to see changes in the planetary, um, in the luminaries, in the stars. You're going to see meteorites. You're going to see stars falling. That's consistent if there is a shaking or quaking of the heavens. He says, and the host of the Most High and the angels, a thousand thousands and ten thousand times ten thousands, were disquieted with the great disquiet. And the head of days, which is Christ, sat on the throne of his glory, and the angels and the righteous stood around him. And a great trembling seized me. Fear took hold of me, and my loins gave way, and dissolved were my reins, and I fell upon my face. And Michael sent another angel from among the holy ones, and he raised me up. And when he had raised me up, my spirit returned, for I had not been able to endure the look of this host and the commotion and the quaking of the heaven. And Michael said unto me, Why art thou disquieted with such a vision? 
until this day lasted the day of his mercy. And he hath been merciful and long suffering towards those who dwell on the earth. And when the day and the power and the punishment and the judgment come, which the Lord of spirits hath prepared for those who worship not the righteous law and for those who deny the righteous judgment and for those who take his name in vain, the day is prepared for the elect a covenant, but for sinners and inquisition. Now, I believe this is important. The reason we are learning the ways of our forefathers, we're going back to Torah. We're going back to trying to learn how to observe the law and the Sabbath and the holy days and the feast days. This is why this is important for us to continue doing this and learning these things. I also believe that taking the name in vain um, is not just someone saying a curse word, which we were told, but all of the names of the Most High that were not his names. To me, those things are names in vain to take his name in vain but he says the day is prepared for them and before they elect a covenant verse 25 when the punishment of the lord of spirits shall rest upon them it shall rest in order that the punishment of the lord of spirits may not come in vain and it shall slay the children with their mothers and the children with their fathers afterwards the judgment shall take place according to his mercy and his patience and on that day were two monsters parted pay attention here a female monster named Leviathan. Now, me, my family, and my husband, my, my children, we have dealt with this spirit firsthand. And this is a twisting spirit. But this spirit is also considered a principality or dominion. It's very huge. From my understanding, it was created on the fourth day when the other beasts of the water were created. And some people um, equate this to a marine spirit, as in um, the spirit husband and spirit wife. But I'm going to show you the connections to Trump, actually. OK, it says to dwell in the abysses of the ocean over the fountains of the waters. But the male is named Behemoth, who occupied with his breast a waste wilderness named Duodane on the east of the garden where the elect and righteous dwell. Where my grandfather was taken up the seventh from Adam. You hear that number again? Seven. That's important. That's going to through this whole teaching. You're going to hear this number seven. The first man whom the Lord of spirits created. And I besought the other angel that he should show me the might of those monsters. How they were parted on one day and cast the one into the abysses of the sea. And so I'm going to show you all a picture of Trump, which I feel like fits, fits this perfectly captured by Time magazine. OK, so just sit tight for a second. Let that marinate. Um, and we'll continue. And when you plot the projected courses of these two solar eclipses on a map, they form a giant X over the center of the United States. Now, I was the only one that makes the observation, so I have to get credit where credit is due. There are a few other people who made the observation. And that makes me think of Saturn because an X, if you put the X in four dimensions, it becomes a cube. Um, and so Saturn is, has a cube um, on top of it, which controls reality. And we know that the cultists worship Satan, which is represented by the planet Saturn. So that kind of ties all of that in. The X is even more important, and I'll get to why in just a second. Now, back to the book of Enoch, what I mentioned before, it's important to notice that in verse six, it talks about the mountains being shaken. Um, it also talks about the high hills shall be made low and shall melt like wax before the flame. Now, hills is where worship of pagans happened, but hills and mountains are also where fallen angels um, reside. And, and actually, if you look through history, you know, Mount Hermes is actually a, a locale for fallen angels. Um, but this picture made me think about the melting. And you can look at the head of state or the president as someone who sits on Capitol Hill on a high hill and how he's going to bring that position low. Check this picture out. Now, in verse 7, he talks about the whole earth being ripped asunder and how the earth was going to perish and how there shall be a judgment upon all men. He says, but the righteous, he will make peace and will protect the elect and mercy shall be upon them. And they shall all belong to God and they shall be prospered and they shall all be blessed. 
and he will help them all and light shall appear unto them and he will make peace with them and behold he cometh with ten thousands of his holy ones to execute judgment upon all and to destroy all the ungodly and to convict all flesh of all the works doesn't that sound like today the works of ungodliness, the things that we are are finding out to be ungodly and are beginning to separate ourselves from. That's because the gathering is coming. And so he's separating us by separating those who acknowledge scripture, take the time to study scripture, ask questions, search it out, pray about it, fast if you have to, and seek wise counsel and speak to other people about it. Um, and so he, the Holy Spirit will always give confirmation when something is true. Um, the Holy Spirit is there to lead us into all truth. He will protect his remnant. He will protect his children. Believe it or not, Christ mentioned the book of Enoch and other disciples mentioned the book of Enoch. So look at this screenshot. You might want to take a screenshot yourself and save it. To the stars and what's happening the things he told us to pay attention to the signs in the sun moon and stars september 23rd 2017 there will be an alignment that's based on the book of revelations chapter 12 and remember 12 states just one month before revelation 12 the sign happened in the heavens will see the eclipse and then you have the 12 tribes of israel being regathered regathered so um you know are you all making these connections and seeing this is so beautiful um to see and be led into these truths now i didn't make that put that together i found it on the internet just searching through the scriptures and the alignment um so i don't want to take credit for something that i didn't create um that particular collage but i wanted to say it's also important and significant with the time magazine because the occultists they have to announce themselves they have to announce their agenda and plans that's the part of dark magic black magic um, is that you announce it first put it before people in plain sight so that the subliminal messages will take root in the consciousness of the people and also so that it will manifest um, the same way that there are rules in the natural realm um, that we call physics um, and so there are quantum physics for rules um, for the um, out in space and the particles that we can't see. And so there are rules and laws. And um, we know that they're going to be manipulating time, manipulating laws. The Antichrist is going to do all of this. And so the Time magazine is being used for the... Um, just to manifest the manipulation of things the Antichrist is doing, especially the time and laws. And I think it's really interesting that they chose the name Time. I'm sure the biography of the creation of that magazine will tell you something different. But you have to learn to read it between the lines and allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the secrets to you, to reveal the things that are hidden from you um, that are keeping us blinded and in bondage uh, as to what's happening. And the Most High said that we should not ever you know, be ignorant of Satan's devices. And he reveals secret things to those with eyes to see and ears to hear. Um, another thing with the Time Magazine, even though that made me think of the meltdown um, in, the, in, in scripture of Enoch and seeing that, it also reminds me of an eclipse. Trump looks very much like a sun. And then when you see the next issue, he looks very much like a sun that has um, shrunk or gotten smaller because darkness has taken that space. And so there's less of the sun. And you can compare that um, subliminally or symbolically to an eclipse. So this was definitely many manifestations. And this was released last year in 2016. So... Tell me what you think, comment, and um, I'll be back with part two because I'm going to address how a lot of these things connect to us. Oh, and I mentioned Antarctica. Let me show you what I found in the book of Enoch, which makes me feel the fallen angels are definitely be been have been imprisoned there. And so this is Enoch, God's promise to Noah, places of punishment of the angels and of the kings, kings of the earth.
You see in the connection, Trump, the abyss, Leviathan, the spirit. Anyway, he says, in those days, the word of God came unto me and he said unto me, Noah, thy lot has come up, up before me. Um, a lot without blame, a lot of love and of rightness. And now the angels are making a wooden building. And when they have completed that task, I will place my hand upon it and preserve it. And there shall come forth from it the seed of life. And a change shall set in so that the earth will not remain um, without inhabitants. And I will make fast thy seed before me forever and ever. And I will spread um, broad those that dwell with thee. It shall be not be unfruitful on the face of the earth, but it shall be blessed. Um, and so this is just his conversation with Noah. And just to get to the point. Remember, as in the days of Lot and Noah, so shall it be in the last days. So that's why this is significant. He says, verse, verse 4, he would imprison those angels who have shown unrighteousness in that burning valley, which my grandfather Enoch had formerly shown to me in the west among the mountains of gold and silver, iron and soft metal and tin. Now, when I think of that, I do think of America. I do think of the gold rush. And you just kind of see how things repeat themselves. Um now let me get straight to the point that was really good verse 5 and I saw that valley in which there was a great convulsion and a convulsion of waters while well, the glaciers are melting things are changing up there um, there are earthquakes and shifts happening in the land masses in Antarctica and so you can definitely um, par see that there is a parallel to what this is saying here let's get to the next parallel speaking about how fallen angels misled the people on earth and um but listen to what he says about the temperature of the water but those waters shall in those days serve for the kings and the mighty and the exalted and those who dwell on the earth for the healing of the body but for punishment of the spirit now their spirit is full of lust that they may be punished in their body for they have denied the lord of spirits and see their punishment daily and yet believe not in his name and in proportion as the burning of their bodies becomes severe, a corresponding change shall take place in their spirit forever and ever. For before the Lord of spirits, none shall utter an idle word. For the judgment shall come upon them because they believe in the lust of their body and deny the spirit of the Lord. And those same waters will undergo a change in those days. For when those angels are punished in these waters, these water springs shall change their temperature. And when the angels ascend, this water of the spring shall change and become cold. Well, we know Antarctica was once warm. Okay. And then the ice age came and it became cold. Look what he says is going to happen next. Now, Michael answered, and he said, you know, the judgment wherewith the angels are judged is a testimony for the kings and the mighty who possess the earth. But those same waters, those same waters who ministered healing, remember all the leaders of the world, including Obama, met in Antarctica. We don't know why. Hitler went there often. We really don't know why. Okay. So there's a connection here. But he says that that water is going to turn to fire. It's going to become a fire which burns forever. So when you hear the global warming thing, when we see the glaciers melting, guess what? Antarctica is heating up once again. Isn't that amazing? The fallen angels definitely are impressed in prison in Antarctica. There is no other place on earth that fits this description. Can you think of one? This was really exciting for me to find this for myself. And um, yeah, so I hope you all enjoy this information as much as I have. And I'll be back shortly with part two. Thank you all so much for um, just sitting with me through this. It's a lot of work, but I appreciate you all. And it helps me to continue researching, reading, and helping people understand the things that are taking place on this earth. If you have anything you'd like to comment and, and you know, just a question or maybe give me some more information i appreciate it i would just want to say thank you ahead of time um don't forget to check us out remnants gathering we do live chats where we discuss a lot of different things um and it's a place for remnants to gather and um that's why we created this whole ministry setup and this study um so yes peace love shalom